You know this little screen in your camera that you look through when you're taking pictures? It actually has a resolution that can be measured in megapixels. But does that resolution really matter? Let's break it down on today's episode of... Ask David Bergman! Hey there everybody, welcome back. Here I am, as always, answering your photography questions right here on Adorama TV. If you've got a photo question, you certainly know what to do by now. Just go to askdavidbergman.com, submit that form on the site, and I just might pick your question and answer right here on a future show. Quick reminder, I've got a simple web page set up with links to all of my stuff, my live workshops, one-on-one -on -one consultations, all of my social media accounts, and my free email list. It's all at thedavidbergman.com, and I hope you'll check it out after you watch this video. I'll also put a link down in the description below. Okay, here's today's question that was sent in by R. Kumar. What's the difference between EVFs with different megapixel counts like 2.36 or 9.44? How much resolution do you need and do refresh rates make a difference? Thank you. Well, thank you for sending in that question. I do certainly appreciate it. So let's talk about EVFs. Now, before mirrorless cameras were as common as they are today, you probably shot with an SLR or a DSLR camera. To see where your lens was pointed, you looked into the camera's viewfinder and an intricate series of mirrors redirected the light so that you could see directly down the barrel of the lens and look at your subject. Now this is called an optical viewfinder because you're seeing your subjects in real life using a series of optics. Now obviously, that image is instantaneous. There's no lag, there's no processing, just pure uninterrupted light. It's kind of a beautiful thing, and it's part of the reason many of us stuck with DSLRs for so long. But mirrorless cameras don't have that mirror mechanism, which means no more optical path. So they added an electronic viewfinder, or EVF, which is basically a tiny little screen inside the viewfinder that shows a real-time preview of the image based on what the camera sensor is seeing. Now this is different than the screen on the back of the camera. I actually did a full video about the pros and cons of optical versus EVF versus live view. And I'll put a link to that down in the description below if you really wanna go deeper on that topic. But for the purposes of this video, we're just talking about the electronic viewfinder. Now since it is a screen, just like any other device, the image on that thing is made up of a whole bunch of tiny pixels. Now how many pixels are crammed in there is usually referred to as the resolution of the screen. Now, before we go too far into the numbers, let's clear something up. The question was asked about EVFs in terms of megapixels, and that's totally understandable because that's usually how we measure, measure resolution. But the reality is the camera manufacturers don't usually list EVF resolution in megapixels. They use the term dots. What's the difference? Well, a pixel on an EVF is actually made up of three dots, red, green, and blue, just like any RGB display. So when a camera spec says the EVF has, say, 2.36 million dots, that works out to 0.79 million pixels, or roughly 0.8 megapixels. You just go ahead and divide that dots number by three. Now, why do they use dots instead of megapixels? I don't know for sure, but my guess is there's two reasons. First of all, when we talk about megapixels in cameras, that usually refers to the number of pixels captured on the image sensor. So it might be confusing to people if we have two different sets of megapixels when you're buying a camera. And I would bet that the other reason is that the marketing departments decided that two and a half million dots sounds more impressive in ads than 0.8 megapixels. Just a guess. I'm gonna stick with the dots numbers for the purposes of this video, since that's how camera makers usually describe them. But now you know how that translates. Okay, so let's get to the meat of the question here. Does it matter how many dots that the EVF actually has? Spoiler alert, yes. Yes, it does. Canon's earliest mirrorless, mirrorless cameras like the EOS M didn't have a built-in EVF at all. You could only use the screen on the back of the camera to shoot. The M3, when that came out, it had an external EVF that you could buy separately and attach it to the hot shoe. But then came the EOS M5, which had a built-in EVF. It was 0.39 inches diagonally and sported a 2.36 million dot OLED screen. Pretty cool stuff for 2016, but in general, early mirrorless EVFs were a tough adjustment for those of us coming from DSLRs with optical viewfinders. With that low resolution, it really didn't feel like you were actually seeing your subject. Displays of that era were kind of dim, contrasty and laggy, and the color accuracy just wasn't quite there. 
That made it challenging to capture fast action, and some would say that you just felt a disconnect from the scene that you didn't have with optical viewfinders. Now, there was some other really cool tech in these new cameras, and the EVF was fine for most people, but the low resolution viewfinder was one of the main reasons that pros really didn't switch over to mirrorless right away. However, as you can imagine, the technology has improved quite a bit in the last decade or so. When Canon launched their first full-frame mirrorless, the EOS R, in 2018, it came with a 3.69 million dot EVF. Now, that may not sound like a lot more, but it was much better and eliminated most of the issues we had with those earlier models. You could actually follow moving subjects without lag or flicker, and manual focusing became way more reliable if you, if you needed it. The cameras I'm using today have really high resolution EVFs. The EOS R5 Mark II has 5.76 million dots, and the R1 has 9.44, or about 3.15 megapixels. That's all on a 0.64 inch OLED screen, and when your eye is right up against it, that screen feels huge. And while those numbers don't sound really big compared to the main image sensor, they make a big, big difference when you're staring into that EVF all day long. Now, other camera brands have had similar advancements over the years. Sony and Nikon have models with 2.5 million dot EVFs, while high-end bodies like the Sony A1 has 9.44 million dots as well. High-resolution EVFs today look an awful lot like when we were shooting optically. You can easily judge focus and see all of the fine detail. The disconnect I talked about before is really gone at this point. I wouldn't say that a 9 million dot EVF is necessary for everyone, but once you get used to looking through one of those screens, it's really hard to go back. Now the other EVF stat we need to talk about is refresh rate. This is how often the screen updates the image each second, and it's measured in hertz. A 60 hertz refresh rate means the image refreshes 60 times per second, while a 120 hertz EVF refreshes twice as fast. That may not sound like a big difference, but you'll definitely notice it when panning or tracking a moving subject. Higher refresh rates are gonna give you smoother motion, reduced lag, and really help you stay connected to the action. That's critical, again, for sports or wildlife, and even if you're just shooting fast-paced events. The Canon EOS R1, for example, has both a 59.94 frames per second setting and a 119.88 mode. Now that faster refresh rate does use more battery, so it really just depends on whether you want to prioritize battery life or smoothness. You can even switch modes depending on what you're shooting. That's probably the best way to go. At 120 hertz, the EVF just feels more real, like the camera disappears and you're just in the moment with your subject. Now since EVFs are so important to the experience of using a camera, camera manufacturers are always working to make them better. On some of the newest models, Canon has a setting called OVF Simulation View Assist. It uses HDR tone mapping to give a flatter, more natural image that's easier to use in high contrast scenes. It's just designated to look more like an optical viewfinder. It doesn't change your final image, but can be helpful when you're shooting in bright sun or trying to keep highlights and shadows from blowing out in your viewfinder. All of the major camera brands have, have made strides as well to improve the EVF experience. For example, Fujifilm's X-Pro series has a hybrid viewfinder that lets you switch between optical and electronic views, and Sony has really pushed refresh, refresh rates up to 240 frames per second. Across the board, EVF tech is getting better every day, and that's a huge win for photographers. Now, in the early days, I was one of those people who was reluctant to switch from optical to electronic viewfinders. But now, with the quality of modern EVFs, I sometimes forget that I'm looking at a screen. The image is sharp, the motion is smooth, and the real-time feedback helps me shoot more confidently and efficiently. What I see in the EVF is pretty much exactly what I'm going to get in my final image. So if you're trying to decide how many megapixels you really need in an EVF, think about how you shoot. For casual photography or street shooting, something in the two to four million dot range is probably gonna serve you just fine. But if you do a lot of critical work, fast action, or long sessions where you're relying heavily on that viewfinder, it's absolutely worth having a higher res, high refresh rate EVF. What do you all think? Do you think EVFs have finally caught up to optical viewfinders, or is that just not something you even worry about? Let me know down in the comments below. Of course, 
Don't forget you can send in your own photo questions by going to askdavidbergman.com. If you like these videos, I do appreciate you hitting that like button and of course subscribing to the Adorama YouTube channel. Go ahead and click that bell icon so you're notified when new shows come out from me and all the hosts here on Adorama TV. Thanks so much for joining me. I hope to see you next time right here on Ask David Bergman.